Hello friends, welcome to the video series on Oracle Collections. So in this video, we are going to see about the basics of VRA that is like what is VRA and how to define, declare, initialize, assign and access the VRA variables. To start with, see VRAs in PL SQL are very similar to array in any other programming languages. Typically arrays will use to store the uh, elements of same data type. Same way in PL SQL also, we are going to use the VRAs to store the elements of same data type. So array is nothing but a, like a variable size array who, where the number of elements can vary from 0 to the maximum declared size. As, as it is mentioned in the document, the array has a maximum limit that is at the uh, declaration time or at the compilation time, you need to mention what is the maximum elements this particular VRA can hold. Once the VRA is uh, defined and declared, we can access the individual element using the uh, variable name of index name. That means every element will have an index. In PL SQL, the lower bound of the index starts with one and the upper bound goes till the level what we have extended or what we have initialized. That is still the maximum limit of the VRA. Okay, uh, we'll understand a bit more detail in the upcoming slides and with few examples. So, to uh, use the VRA, we need to follow few steps and you need to follow exactly in the same order. First, we need to define the VRA data type because it is a user defined data type. Probably I am interested in storing a list of name and you might be interested in storing a list of date. So it is it is a completely a user defined because maybe based on my uh, expectation, I want to define my own user defined data type, my own user defined array, and you may be interested in defining your own array. So this is a user defined data type. First, we need to define the data type. Once we define, we can declare a variable for the data type, then initialize, assign, and access. You need to follow in the exactly the same order. First, we'll start with how to define a VRA. So here is the syntax of how you can define a VRA. So it has to be part of your declaration sec section and the type keyword says that it is a, a type definition. You need to give a name for your type. Is is a keyword and VRA is a keyword saying that this particular uh, type is a VRA and of seven. So this says what is the maximum limit up to which this particular VRA can hold and what the elements can hold is mentioned by the data type. That means uh, this particular user defined data type can hold that is a variable of this data type can hold a maximum of seven element of varchar 2 of 30 data type. So this is all about how to define a user defined data type of VRA type. Now, once the data type is defined, now we need to define a variable of this data type. So here is a variable declaration. So you, you can give a variable name followed by the data type name. This is nothing but what we just now defined. So this is all about the declaration. As part of declaration, we need to initialize the array. Okay. So this is a Initialization is mandatory, but what value to initialize is option. Probably this will understand with few examples later, but for time being, you just understand that this is how we will initialize. We'll initialize using the constructor name, nothing but the type name only. So this is the initialization part. So in this case, what I did is that I'm just initializing for all the seven value with null values. Okay. Sorry, all the seven elements with null value. One one key thing you need to keep it in mind is that at the time of initialization, Oracle automatically allocates the memory for the elements. That means if you are initializing all the seven elements here, the memory for all these seven elements are allocated. Since I have initialized all the seven and with the null value, now that seven elements are allocated. So this is all about the defining a data type, declaring a variable of that data type, and then initializing a default value. I, I am initializing with null value, but it's not mandatory. You can initialize with your own value. There are other ways of initialization that we'll see later, but right now you just keep it in mind that now we are declaring and we are initializing also. In case if you don't want to initialize a null value at this stage, you just need to give the 
null constructor here that is mandatory otherwise we will get an error that error will see a bit later the next st stage is once uh, the variable is declared and initialized now we can start assigning the value and as i mentioned already the index starts from 1 to 7 here and we can access the each element by its index value something like this we can as access and assign the first element by the name saying that v underscore day of 1 equal to monday the moment you assign a value this particular values will keep loading into the memory location what was already uh, allocated during the initialization section so this is all about the assignment section so the moment you assign all this information will be loaded into the respective memory elements so the now that we have defined a data type we have declared a variable of the data type we have initialized the informations also and we have assigned some values also now we can start accessing the individual element and that is very simple we just need to access using the uh, variable name that is the uh, dead, uh, variable name like v underscore day of the subscript so that the individual element can be accessed so in this case v day of one will access the first element same way v day of two will access the second element exactly like the third will access the third element okay uh, we'll we'll understand uh, in bit more detail few examples but just before that whenever you are working in the collections it's not restricted to this vra it's 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 common for all the three types of collections you will definitely come across these three exceptions okay reference to an initialized collection subscript beyond count and subscript outside of limit we'll try to understand with few examples now so this is uh, exactly the same program what I've just now show you. Let me just execute and show you the output. Then we'll proceed to the next example. As you can see here, we just declared a, a v array data type. Then we, um, sorry, we defined the uh, user defined the v array type. Then we declared and initialized a variable. Then we are assigning the information. That is, we are assigning the uh, name of uh, day into all these elements. Then we are accessing the first four days. That's what it's getting printed here. Now we'll try to understand few more things here. Okay, so just for uh, easy understanding, I've just removed all the uh, six rest of the six days other than Monday. Let me first execute this program. Then we'll try to modify this little bit. Okay, so as you can see here, we just initialized only for one element here. Then we are assigning Monday here. Fine, that's why the Monday is actually assigned to the first element. Now suppose if you're trying to assign Tuesday to the second element, okay now we will be getting an error first we'll see the error then we'll try to understand what it is trying to say you'll be seeing an error called subscript beyond count this is because we actually initialized for only one element that's why once you when the moment it is initialized only one elements memory location will get allocated if you want to allocate for second memory location then you need to initialize two uh, elements here now if we try to execute this program it will get executed successfully that is because we initialized two uh, elements here and we are assigning two values in the assignment section okay let me remove this part I, I just want to show you the other way of initialization okay after this see there is another way of initialization that is using the extend method as you can see here I just mentioned v date underscore date dot extend See, the extend will automatically allocate one memory location. Now, now let me just try to execute this program. As you can see here, first memory location we allocated as part of the declaration section or as part of the variable declaration. The second uh, element we allocated within the execution block. So the advantage is that because at the time of declaration, we may not know how many elements we will be using during the execution of a program. For example, I want to declare a maximum of 100 element, but I may not be in a position to use all the 100 at the runtime. It depends on the programming logic. I may use either 50 or 20 or 25. It depends. So based on your need, you can dynamically allocate and use the memory location. So this is the first point. Now let us try to understand the second error. Okay. Now let me just remove these things. So this is our initial program. Now let me just remove this part. 
So what happens is we just declared the variable. We have not initialized. As I mentioned, even if you don't want to initialize with one value, but mandatorily you need to initialize with null constructor. Otherwise you'll be getting an error called reference to uninitialized collection. So the initialize section is mandatory. For that, we can just say an empty constructor like this. So this is how we need to initialize. Now let us try to execute and see what other exception or error we are getting. Now if you see, now we are getting it subscript beyond count. Now we are not getting the uninitialized collection error. Instead of that, now we are getting subscript beyond count. That is because now we have actually initialized, but we have not extended for even a single element. So we have two options. Either we can initialize as part of the uh, this null constructor. Otherwise we can use the extend method. Let me now use the extend method dot extend okay now let me execute this program again now if you see it the program got successfully executed and it is printing monday fine so there is one more few more things to understand here so the extend keyword by default will extend only one element in case if you want to extend two two elements you can just pass a, a parameter here saying two or whatever the number of element you want to assign now let me execute with two element because now it is executed because we just assign only one value let me assign one more value here Tuesday in the second element. Yes, it is getting ex successfully uh, executed. Now let me assign Wednesday in the third element. Obviously we'll be getting error here because we actually extended for two elements only, but we are trying to assign for the third element also. So this is, it will throw a subscript beyond count. The reason is we just extended only for two element, but we are trying to assign for the third element because it's not still allocated fine let me just remove this we'll understand one more point here when you are trying to extend more than the allocated limit because here the maximum limit of this array is seven only if you are trying to extend for eight or ten you will be getting an error called subscript outside of the limit so there are three different errors we have some one is like reference to uninitialized collection subscript beyond count and subscript outside of limit. I hope now you'll be able to understand all these three better. If you have learned something new, please like this video and share your comments. Subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos, interview questions, SQL practical questions, concept videos. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can either drop in the comment section or you can post to this mail ID. Thanks a lot.